All right, so can you see it? The data file, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Okay, so I'm going to go by the uh, sample questions, starting from employment worksheets, and just starting off a uh, higher date. By the way, these list worksheets are basically listing employee information, employee ID, last name, higher date, birthday, location, and all those, you know, those information about employees. And the main thing we're trying to do is we're trying to find some other information like uh, insurance premium based on certain conditions, 401, 401k, which is like a retirement plan uh, based on certain conditions. Again, bonus, how much you're going to get the bonus and so forth. So that's what we're going to find out using employees' conditions or information. Okay, so that's the main thing here. So, uh, step number three says higher date, which is column C. So, we're going to make it column C, short date. So, I'm going to just highlight column C, go to number format. I'm going to make it short date because right now it's just format is in, uh, general. So, it doesn't show it. It doesn't show the uh, dates format, so that's what we are doing. Column D, same thing, want to make it general number two, short date format. There you go. So those two columns make it short date format. Then we also have an annual salary in column J. want to make it accounting number format, so I'm just highlight J, column J, and apply accounting format from the uh, number format. Counting, there you go. And I have two decimal places, but uh, I'll just leave it that way. Okay, that was step three. Step four says insert Excel table, an Excel table named master, da master data. So in here, we're going to insert Excel table name so entire area becomes master data so i'm going to go ahead and click insert and i'm going to click table right here and entire area is highlighted then i'm going to click ok and what we're going to name this area we're going to go here table name at the top the top left so right here i'm going to name it master Data. One word. And press enter. Okay. So this entire area becomes master uh, data so that we can refer to. That was step four. Step five through step six, actually. Yeah, five, six, seven is just using if function. Okay. Five, six is basically if function. So starting from column N, which is life insurance premium. So we're going to determine this amount, insurance premium based on what it's saying is age. So age is greater than or equal to 40, then the premium becomes annual salary times 0.3%. Okay, again, the cut line is 40, uh, 40 years old. Otherwise, meaning less than 40 years old, then it's going to be 0.1% times annual salary. So, you know, this is random condition, it did all depending on the company or whatever organization, but this company has this uh, condition, so we're going to apply that. So, here we go, equals F. Age, age is located in, where is located in? M, right by here. So rather than uh, click here, I'm going to just type it in M2. Otherwise, if I click it, as you can see, the cell reference becomes pretty long, so it's sometimes hard to read, so I'm going to just make it M2 rather than click the cell. All right, M2 is greater than, actually, greater than or equals to. 
40, comma, then uh, the premium becomes annual salary times. So annual salary is located J2 times 0.3%. Otherwise, 0.1% of annual salary. All right. Okay. So hopefully, oops, I got syntax. Oh, okay. I got bracket. Why the bracket is here? All right. It's always a little things. Here we go. So that's the uh, our first if function for step five. Step six actually uh, crossed out, but you know why not try? Which is four or one k. So uh, my thinking was just maybe if or if and function a bit more difficult, so I didn't intend to you know have it, but and try this. If or meaning that in this case, let's see, uh, years of service, so based to determine 401k amount, we're going to use years of service. So number of years of service uh, greater than or equals to 5. So that's the first condition. The other condition is job status. So we're going to looking at years of service and job status and if it's satisfying, one or the other is satisfying, the annual salary becomes 5%. I mean, annual salary times 5%. Otherwise, it's going to be zero. So that's the condition. Okay, it's a little bit tricky. So let's try that. If or, we're going to enter those two conditions. One is uh, years of service, which is L2. is greater than or equals to 5, comma, then uh, job status is FT, meaning full-time. Where is job status located? G2. So G2 equals FT. Notice that I'm using a double quotation for FT because this is text, it's not number. Then I'm going to close those uh, two conditions for OR. Then I'm going to uh, place comma. Right after comma, you're going to give a uh, answer to the, the determination for the uh, when it is satisfying. So if it is satisfying, then you get 5%. So same thing like we did it J2 times. 5%, is it 5%? Yeah, 5%, 5%, otherwise it's zero. Okay, watch out for the old syntax, hopefully, yep, I think it looks fine. There you go. So we can manually check, just in case. All right, first one, this year's of service is uh, six years. Job status. You know, it's already satisfying, right? So, so it's got, that's why it's got 5%. And the second one, years of service only two. Then job status is CN, which is not FT, so that's why it's got zero. Okay, so it looks good. And there you go. So that's the if or function based on those two conditions. All right, so if 
if an end function would be same, right? Meaning that you need to satisfy both of them to return certain amount or certain calculation. So all you do is just changing uh, or to end, okay? If this is the if end function. All right, so that was if or or if and. Then step seven, this time we're going to use the lookup function, hlookup. We used to use vlookup, but if you look at lookup worksheets, we have vlookup table and hlookup table. So this time we're going to use hlookup table. Only difference is just horizontally placed rather than vertical placement. Okay. So we have only two rows. So row number one and row number two. So if it's pay grade is one, you get uh, 3,500. Pay grade is two, then you get 5,500 and so forth. So that's the uh, HLOOKUP function we're going to apply in column P. Okay. So let's start that HLOOKUP. And using using uh, what was that again? Pay grade, yeah, pay grade. So pay grade is located in. H2, I mean column H, right? Okay, so I'm going to start H2. Then I'm going to go back to lookup so that I can highlight this lookup area. Or you can create a, a you know, named range and you can use a RAN range, but this is not the case. So we're going to just highlight that area or type it in the area, the comma, then we're going to enter row number to be returned, which is row number two. So I'm going to type number two. Then this is the exact match. So I'm going to place false at the end. Then looks like I've made a mistake, right? What did I make a mistake? E5, H6, right? And H. Well, I can just, first of all, I need to enter dollar sign to make sure. I had a question. I was wondering what it would do because the pay grade is zero, but there's not a zero in the lookup table. Right, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, it fixed it. So here we go. So I can show you here. It works because I did, just didn't enter, you know, uh, absolute self-reference. And zero will just return as a error message, as you can see. First two are zero and pay grade right here, right? That's what you're talking about. So it will return as error right here. And other things... Yep, other numbers are good because it's, it's not zero. And then it's going to return all those amount based on. Okay, I'm going to go back to formula view again. Right there. So that's our H lookup. Again, don't forget the absolute self reference, the dollar sign. And this time, uh, step number eight, that's for column Q, determining health premium. We're going to use the VLOOKUP this time. And VLOOKUP for monthly pre premium for the health insurance based on plan you assigned. So whatever plan, then you get the premium and just like uh, VLOOKUP this place. Okay, so let's do that. 
we look up and plan health plan there you go k2 right k2 then i'm going to highlight this lookup area then come on number two then false And again, just, you know, don't forget the dollar sign. And there you go. I have a question. Mm -hmm. What are you clicking to make it go that fast with the... the uh, oh, okay. Yeah, formula view. Yes, sir. Yeah, in Windows, Control and Tilde. Tilde is located all the way to the top. For the at the same time. For the absolute cell reference. The dollar sign, yeah. Yeah. The, okay. Okay. Thank mm. you. No, I'm talking about formula view. I'm sorry, formula view. Oh, but I'm dollar sorry. sign. Uh, yes, sir. To to insert dollar sign, you press F4. If it's Windows. The Thank you. It, yep. No problem. All right, so there you go. That's our column Q using VLOOKUP. Step nine, a word. What we got? Okay, here we go. So the company is... Uh, determined to uh, give away some more words and based on years of service. So the longer served, then you get, you know, more awards. This looks like it's a dollar amount right here, uh, column W and X. So you serve 10 to 14, you get 1,000, 6 to 9, 800 and so forth. Okay, so that's what we're going to use. It's not VLOOKUP, but you are... Uh, you need to use the if function, okay? So a little bit uh, tricky, so you need to think about how you're gonna apply this if function, okay? Let me just bring it over here a little bit, okay, okay. So, F, years of service, or is the years of service? Uh, or L, L2, right? L2 is greater than, so we need to start from the, the highest number, so you gradually goes down. Otherwise, your if function will make us some logical error, right? So whatever number you get, you're gonna go through this first condition. So you need to say L2 is greater than 9, right? So it will contain numbers 10 above, right? Comma, oops, comma, if it's satisfying, you get uh, 1,000, which is located in right here, X3. If the number is not above 9, then if function will continue. So you need to open up another if so that the number will test it. Next one, which is L2, same L2, is checking whether it's greater than this time. What's going to be? Anybody? Five. Five. There you go. So that it will it'll check, I mean, it'll uh, look for those numbers between 6 to 9, right? Because the previous one already checked for 10 above, okay? So if you're not sure, you just, you know, take a few minutes and you'll figure it out. Then if it's true, meaning that number is 6 to 9, then you get 800. So I'm, oh, we're going to show x4, comma, another f. In case the number is not between these numbers, it's going to keep 
you know, looking for condition. Again, same L2 is this time greater than two, right? Then X5. Let's keep doing it. Then L2 is greater than zero. Zero, right? Then X6. What's next? Uh, if L2 is equal to zero? Right, but you can do so, but note that this is, is going to be the last one. So if it's the last one, you don't have to open up another if, right? Because you have a, only one choice after this. So you just show whatever left over, which is X6, I mean X7, the last one, this one, right? Got it. Okay. Could you also just put zero there? Because if none of those are true, then you want the answer to be zero? No. The X7 will be taken care of. Okay. Okay. I didn't open if here properly. Let me, let me do this. If. Yeah. And note that at the end, you need to close the same number of those parentheses opened up. So I had four parentheses at the end. Why? Because I opened up four times. So look very closely. If function requires three variables. So see that? One, two, three. This if, first if. Same thing. Within this if, I have three variables like that, right? Same thing, this F, within this F, I have three of them. Same thing, within this last F, I have three variables. Okay, you must have those three variables within each F function. Okay, so if you made a, if you forgot or skip one of those variables, you're going to have some uh, syntax error, which is a little bit tricky to fix. And here we go. And then let me take a look what we got. So I got 800 for the first one. Years of service, six years. Yeah, right? And the second one, two years. Two years should be 350, right? So something is not right. See that uh, right here? Two years, we're supposed to have 350, but we got zero. Something is not right. I think I made a mistake. Let's see. Yeah, I think you forgot your dollar signs, didn't you, in your reference? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, that's always the case, you know. I I had a question just like that. I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. There you go. Okay. So again, just always check you know, your uh, absolute set reference, especially those VLOOKUP F, those conditional format, con conditional uh, functions. Any questions, comments? No, sir. Okay, great. All right, let's move on to 11, which is uh, using count if, average if, sum if, which is located in our summary worksheets. So we're going to use the same uh, worksheet, which is lists. So in the list, we have a location column. So listing the city name, right? So based on city name, we're going to count number of 
city appeared, but that first one is just a. We'll just leave it as it is. It's supposed to be Atlanta, but I have a typo, so that's fine. We have Austin and home and so forth. So we're going to count on uh, each location. Now the second one, which is average salaries, we're going to find the average salary for each city. Same thing, total salary for each city appeared in the list worksheets. But we're going to use the count if, average if, sum if, okay, respectively. So here we go, count if. Then we're going to refer to list worksheets, which is column F. So I'm going to just click column F at the top, comma. Then you need to select city name, the first city name you're working on, which is Atlanta, Atlanta. So I'm going to just click B4 because B4 contains the word Atlanta. Or you can type it in Atlanta with a double quotation. Either way will work. Then it's going to sh um, return. It's just going to return. Uh, it's the formula's name. Yeah, you yeah. have F I. I had a, yeah, I have typo. Yep. Right. All right. So that's the uh, count it. Then all you do is just autofill because uh, it's going to change to B5, B6, B7, and all that, so you don't have to repeat the same count if function. Okay? Average if requires one more variable in average if. So let's do that. Average if, and we're going to go back to list and select column F, comma, then you need to show the first city. So I'm going to click B4, comma, then you need to select the annual salary amount so that Excel will calculate the average of annual salary. So I'm going to select annual salary using J. And there you go. That's our average F right there. So you need one more variable, right, compared to count if. And all you do is just autofill. And sum if is the same thing as average if. So sum if. And select column F. Then you select the first city. Then you go back to lists. Then you select annual salary. And there you go. That's your total salary for each city. All right. So that was step 11. Starting from step 12, just creating pivot table, okay? Uh, pivot table is not like a function or any of calculations. So it's more of, it can be kind of trial and error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the screenshot of the results just like this. Uh, let, me, let me switch. Let me switch my Okay, so this is the one. So this is the first a screenshot for the pivot table. So that's what you're going to get. And based on this screenshot, you're going to create a pivot table. Of course, you're giving us some uh, explanation, but 
the direction may not, if you have only direction, it's, it's hard to create this pivot table. So that's why I'm going to provide the screenshot as well as the direction. Okay, so that's what's going to happen in the tests. So using screenshot, creating pivot table is pretty simple. All you do is just, just assign all this column to appropriate area. Okay, so based on this screenshot, we're going to create a uh, pivot table. So I'm going to go back to Excel, so just a second. There we go. So first one So looking at this screenshot, we have uh, uh, location, then we have employee ID, annual salary. So that's why we're going to enter. So we're going to do the insert, pivot table. Then most likely it's going to say uh, creating new worksheets. So I'm going to select new worksheets. Then I'm going to click OK. That's our new worksheets. And it's going to ask you to save it as, I'm going to just name it Pivot. Pivot Table 1. Okay. All right. Again, the screenshot and direction says select employee ID, location, and your salary. Okay. When you just click this column and Excel will determine where those uh, columns will go as they appear right here, either columns, rows, or values. You can always, again, switch this. Okay, you can just, you know, drag it out or just remove it if you want it. If you don't need it, you can remove it just like that. So you can just drag it or select column. So I'm going to just move up just like that. And your salary to the values, then location to the column. Then if it's not what you want, you can always switch, right? So this is the way I think a, a screenshot has, okay? But first one, which is sum up ID, it's not sum up ID, we want count number of employee IDs. So I'm going to change it to count. So also I think it has number of number of employees. So that's the label goes right here, number of employees. Okay. And again, because it's count, it's going to count number of city and it's going to give you uh, the total annual salary for each city. So I think that's the our first PV table. And also it has a little details like a, a dollar sign and all that. So that's something you need to work on. I have a question. Sure. What did you click to change from sum of employees to number of employees? Sure. Okay. Hold on just a second. So whatever those calculation statistics, that's on the value section right here, okay? So the first one we had was sum of employee ID, right? which is not what we want. We want number of employees using count. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click here. Then I'm going to click value field settings. 
And if you see this, then you can change whatever the calculation you want to do. So I select count. Also, you can change the label or custom name appear. At the same time, you can change the number format by click here so that you can change the number format. I cannot see... Oh, never mind. Never mind. Oh, is that? No, I agree. I don't really know what you were saying. You can it's click like here. It was like a white space. You were pointing oh. to a white space. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that right? Yeah. Probably doesn't pick it up. The uh, Teams screen. Let me just reshare it, okay? Stop, and I'm going to reshare. Hopefully this time. Is it better? No? No, sir. It's, no? It's, no. Okay. Then it's let me... It's not showing up at all, but I think it's because of teams or something. All right, right. Let me try to share the whole screen. Okay, I'm sharing whole screen. Is it better? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. okay. Thank you. All right. So that's that's what I mean. Okay, again, I select here. And I select value field settings. Then you can select one of the calculation or statistics. Okay. And number format button. You can change the number format. Okay? Okay, thank you. All right. That really helped. <laughs> All right, great. The second pivot table, which is number 13, this time we have a pivot chart. Okay? And column, you're going to select higher date, job status, and your salary. So I'm going to go back to list worksheets. I'm going to go ahead and click insert, pivot table, new worksheets. I'm going to just name it pivot table 2. And again, Higher date, job status, and your salary. Higher date, job status, and your salary. All right? What we want to show is only month, okay? But when you select the date, it will show the year, quarter, month, and all that. You show all those uh you know, hierarchical dates all the way. So let's say you want to, again, you want to show the month only. So you just remove this year, just throw up in the air. Then you keep on it a uh, month. Okay? And that's how you can organize like uh, uh, the screenshot has. Even date. I think we have a date, right? Yeah. Date. Let's go back to our screenshot.
job status should be uh, here. Yeah. All right. So that's what we want. Then at the same time, uh, pivot chart. Right? Pivot chart is right here. That's under pivot chart analyze. Click pivot chart. Then just like inserting a chart, but this time we want to have a bar chart. Okay. There you go. And I think it looks like a the screenshot. Well, actually, screenshot has a column chart, but I meant to insert bar chart. Okay, so you can always change the chart. Uh, go back to a change chart type, right? You can do pie chart, line chart, whatever, different chart. All right, so that was step 13. Step 14 is just uh, let you insert your name, you know, as a just random uh, data entrance, then uh, followed by insert your name into header. All right, so any question about this uh, first set? No, sir. You good? Okay. All right. The second one we have... Let's see, what was that? The other one. Second one is... Paul? Yeah. All right, so this is uh, working with multiple worksheets. Okay, so we have like uh, so many worksheets, but has the exactly same structure. So we're going to just uh, um, make the same group. For example, January 2 all the way to sheets number 19, 20. So we have 20 of them. So let's do that. Start from January, so I select, then I'm going to group them by select the last one, which is 20. So all 20 worksheets are highlighted at the same time. Then we're going to find a total for column E. So here we go, sum of this. And here to uh, row number 11, we're going to insert some of that. And percent of surgery, meaning that we have surgery number, then we have total number. So we want to find percent of this surgery number out of total. Okay. So just simply uh, use the division. So take the surgery, divide by total. And you have so many decimal places, just let's apply uh, percent format and two decimal places. Right? So that's the beauty of uh, group those worksheets and all those Sheets already calculated just like that, if you click them, right? So we have that step taken care of. Now question is, how are you going to consolidate all those worksheets into one? So we have summary, and we're trying to consolidate all those using sum function. So here we go, sum. So I'm going to group, starting from January again. Press Control, press Shift and Hold. Then I'm going to select the last one, which is 20. Then I'm going to select B5, because that, that's our first cell to add. 
There you go, we have 8 times 35. Then, again, good thing about this is we can autofill all the way. Except the percent again. If you autofill percent, then it'll add up the percentage. It's not going to calculate. So be careful. Percent you need to calculate at this point. So you just use the same division just like we have done. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, can you do that again where you came up with the 835, how you added all of them up all at once? Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to delete this one. Okay, so let's do that again. So starting from B5, so you're going to add all those numbers up here in each worksheet in B5. Okay, so you're going to use the sum equals sum, opening parenthesis. Okay, then you're going to select January, press shift and hold. Again, this is the window computers. Then you're going to select the last one, which is worksheet 20. Then you're going to select B5. That's what we are working on. Click B5 and press Enter. Thank you. All right. Then uh, after that, you just autofill sideways, autofill vertically. Then you get all those numbers, except again, the percent. Okay. Need to calculate the percent. And that's it. Any questions? No, sir. Thank you right. so much. Great. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you. This was helpful. Great. All right. Very helpful. Yes. Thank you. All right. No problem. Was, thank you. It was eight. Thank and you. Have a great night. All right. So if you have any questions, just let me know. See you later. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye, y'all. Thank you. See you.